Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. I always like scripture to begin speaking for itself and then we'll take it from there. Now, therefore, Joshua is wrapping up his time now. He's about to die and he's giving his final charge to the people. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Next verse. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, someone receive it for yourself. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Say it one more time. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Verse 16. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage and which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way therein wherein we went and among all the people through whom we passed 18 and the lord drove out before us all the people even the amorites which dwelt in the land therefore we will also serve the lord for he is our god they are making their declarations now 19 and joshua said unto the people ye cannot serve the lord for, for he is a holy God. In other words, you cannot serve him in this state. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sin. 20. If ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you after that he had done you good. 21. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. Next verse. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witnesses against yourselves, that ye have chosen you the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Now therefore put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto the God of Israel. 24. And the people said unto Joshua, The Lord our God, 
will we serve and his voice will we obey we're almost there 25 so Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and set them a statute and an ordinance in Shechem and Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God and took a great stone and set it up under an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord 27 and Joshua said unto all the people behold this stone shall be a witness unto us for it had heard all the words which the Lord spake unto us and it shall be therefore a witness unto you lest ye deny your God the final verse 28 so Joshua let the people depart every man to his inheritance amen now look up very interesting in the first scripture we read how that the people had left you know um, Egypt the land of captivity and they were somewhere in the you know the wilderness and Moses was summoned by God to go and receive commandments to guide them because they were uh, Bible history would tell us there were over two million people and you couldn't lead a people like that without laws that would guide them and so the Lord was giving Moses you know the laws and Moses spent some time with God and the people became so impatient and they said look we're tired of this thing maybe Moses has lost his place and has died Aaron make us gods we remember in Egypt every time they would worship these gods you know Ra and all these other gods let's make us these gods we would donate our gold the same gold God gave them I hope you know they were slaves and if you remember they spoiled the Egyptians by the favor of God now they had used those same the same gold they built a calf so while the Lord was with Moses Moses noticed that the Lord began to be angry and he said something is happening in the camp these people have forsaken me they've left you thinking you are dead and now they are beginning to worship other gods and Moses supposedly pacified God and when he came to the camp himself he was angry he broke the commandments ground it into powder and gave the people to drink then he made a statement he said listen before I allow the Lord vent vengeance upon you let me know now who is on the Lord's side in other words I will give you room to choose and the Bible says only the sons of Levi moved and said we're on the Lord's side when you continue the reading you will see that an earthquake happened and it opened up the earth and swallowed over 3,000 of them hallelujah then we come to Joshua 24 remember that when you read Joshua from verse 1 Joshua was the successor of Moses the same Moses we read about so he what we're reading is a continuation are we together now yes he charged Joshua and Joshua led the people excellently they threw down Jericho you know the whole event that happened um, at, at AI and then now finally they'd gotten access to their possessions he shared the land and he was giving them his final charge as an old man he was about to depart and he began to charge them he said listen something happens to men when they have results something happens to men when they come to a place of inheritance so let me give you my final charge that it is within your power to choose either to serve the God of heaven or to serve these other gods that you have seen and they made up their minds unanimously that they would serve the Lord God so he made a covenant and dedicated them afresh unto the Lord I'm teaching on who is on the Lord's side we live in a world today that is very complex people vacillate their convictions today they are for God tomorrow they are for something else uh, at the slightest communication of pain or disappointment or setback people seem to have a new orientation as to how they want to live their lives spiritually speaking many people have caused God to his face simply because of one sad event or the other that has happened right now there's a lot of economic hardship across the nations even our nation and so many people are beginning to doubt their convictions people who once were on fire for God seem to be cold and not care and not mind in fact it's so sad that those who used to work in the vineyard 
people who were once pastors laboring missionaries are now hanging their boots and saying this god thing does not it doesn't seem to work i've served god 10 years 20 years sadly some of them are our parents our loved ones our relatives and they will tell you don't talk to me about this god in 1970 this in 1980 this i gave my all i served the lord and it doesn't look like there is any profit in serving the lord and so this message comes as a wake-up call this message comes as a very strong call bringing us to a point where we have to re-examine by the spirit where we stand especially in light of the days that are now before us and are soon to be upon us hallelujah let me start by discussing the implications of being on the lord's side what are the implications of being on the lord's side when the bible says that a man can and should be on the lord's side now you want to understand this statement you will need to have a little appreciation for sports many of you here i believe watch football and this is not to create any controversy but some of you are already smiling because i mentioned soccer or football because you are now thinking of your team and um, there is such a disturbing in fact loyalty for teams and sports whether it's in soccer basketball but football especially or soccer as we know um there's so many teams popular teams that we have you know and um they have what they call a fan base am i right on that and some of you are dedicated fans of certain clubs very dedicated you can fight for them you can die for them you can argue as to who won who should be bought over as a player or who should be thrown out and there are people who begin to argue over clubs and they say if you are if you've not started watching football from 2001 don't join this argument you know and um i've had quite an experience watching people's zeal and it's very instructive you see people remove their shirts they endure the heat standing close to cinema houses crying weeping expressions of emotions arguing husbands fighting with wives because they are you know two teams apart now the point i'm trying to communicate is that in this scenario when two teams are about to play usually even the best of friends the moment they are ready to watch the football match they now diverge themselves to different sides for instance someone can say i'm for arsenal then another person says i'm for Man U." that's what you call it and then every other team that you know that i don't know hallelujah are we together and sometimes you can find the best of friends i mean these were people who ate together they woke up together rejoicing together and simply because there is a match playing they can look at themselves with such disdain argue and insult themselves and you see players rejoice when they have an opportunity or fans rejoice when they have the opportunity to buy the original used shirts of some of the players they rejoice you know People subscribe to different platforms that seem to promote a strong fan base. And there are people who would tell you, some have even tattooed it on themselves. I'm a diehard uh, Arsenal fan or a diehard Man U fan or a diehard whatever it is, you know. So that, that is the concept of identity. They have chosen to identify with a team and even in the face of defeat there are times that you see that when a match is over you see a group of people rejoicing laughing at others and you see others disappointed but still determined to remain there have you seen that happen disappointed but determined they will patiently wait for another season when they hope that their teams will win again so it's in that similitude that Moses is charging the people and this is what he's saying you spent 430 years in Egypt you saw the Egyptians and you saw their gods you had an opportunity to see their gods walk and act you had an opportunity to see them use divination and spiritism and you saw whatever merits and demerits that came from that practice 
and you also had an opportunity to see the true God Yahweh when I came to advocate your exodus you saw the plagues you were witnesses now that you have deviated simply because I was away for maybe some weeks he says I'm giving you one last chance before the Lord vents his anger you have to make a very strong and a very firm decision who is on the Lord's side who is on the Lord's side who is on the Lord's side write this down please what is the implication of being on the Lord's side number one the Lord's side is the side of protection and preservation please write it down the Lord's side is the side of protection and preservation Psalm 63 and verse 8 Psalm 63 and verse 8 he said my soul followeth hard after thee thy right hand upholdeth me the Lord's side I'm discussing the implications of being on the Lord's side what are the merits is there any benefit of being on the Lord's side that number one the Lord's side is the side of protection and preservation John 17 and verse 12 Jesus is praying now John 17 and verse 12 1 2 John 17 12 he says while I was with them in the world I kept them in thy name those that thou gavest me I have kept those that you gave me those that came to me I have kept he says and none of them is lost except the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 2 is God speaking to us already second Timothy 1 12 my apologies 1 verse 12 second Timothy 1 and verse 12 it says for which things cause I also suffer these things nevertheless I am not ashamed for I know whom I have believed powerful scripture and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day that when you come to his side and commit things or commit your life he is able to keep even against that day so when Moses is asking who is on the Lord's side, he's asking who desires to be on the side of protection and preservation. Please look at me. There is no, in the world that we live in right now, there is no amount of physical security that is enough to protect an individual from the spiritual, emotional, and even physical harm and mayhem that plagues our society. We have seen people attacked with the most sophisticated security architecture. We've seen people become victims of something the psalmist calls the arrows that fly by day, the noisome pestilences by night, is that true? The destruction that wastes in noonday. We've seen people healthy and strong, yet they died. We've seen people attempting to manage mysterious sicknesses that doctors and, you know, medics are not able to diagnose. The Lord's side means immunity against the wickedness and the mayhem that plagues our world. In fact, the Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. You believe that? It says the righteous run it to it and they are saved. That some trust in horses and chariots. Now you must understand that horses and chariots are very important. The armies in ancient times who climb on horses and chariots to fight. So it says some trust in horses and chariots, but we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. The Lord's side is a side of protection and preservation. I don't know about you, but I submit to you by the integrity of the word that the days that are coming will require supernatural protection and supernatural protection 
preservation because you see for many of you the way God is training you and the way God is raising you there are altars that fought people who went before you at the moment someone begins to rise from a family here comes these wicked spirits and this altar it says what seest thou and he said four horns these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Jerusalem, and against Israel. He says, so that no man doth lift up his head. Have you seen a scenario where someone who now becomes the breadwinner or the one God is lifting to wipe the tears of a family and all of a sudden he will tell you, I just went out and a bike hit me. Shout God forbid. One more time, shout God forbid. Who is on the Lord's side means who is interested in securing the protection and the preservation of Elohim in these perilous times, these evil days. Where someone can give you a kiss as Judas, you will think it's a kiss of love, but it's a sign to the enemy, this is the one to kill. Have you not heard of people who arrange the kidnap of their fathers, their brothers, and they join the people to cry? The Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked. Is someone getting blessed already? Let me tell you the truth. It's good to be in the side of the police. It's good to be on the side of the law enforcement agencies, the DSS, they have their place, excellent people. It's good to be in the side of all kinds of people. It's good to be in the side of um, doctors and medics and paramedics. But the Lord is asking you a question. If God does not build a house, who will claim that he can build it for you? Are we together? Yes. Who is on the Lord's side? Meaning who is on the side of preservation? I don't know about you, but I'm not ready to risk my life giving a chance to trust mundane things and people. I have found that God is the only one who can protect a man. The Bible says he stands by me as a mighty terrible one. I don't know the arrows that fly by day. I don't know how many shrines my name is taken to every day. I don't know how many shrines coin. You will be joking to believe everybody loves you. You will be joking to think that while you are praying in tongues, while you are rising and declaring, God lift me. I hope you know that while you are making up your mind to be a blessing, Satan is also a witness. He's watching your prayer. He's watching your sacrifice. He's already seen the formation of the anointing upon you. He knows you are an apostle, right? for sure he knows you're a prophet rising for sure he knows that you're a kingdom entrepreneur rising for sure and I assure you by the integrity of scripture Satan will do all within his power don't say I did not trouble anyone the fact that you found yourself on this side of God's kingdom and you made up your mind for Jesus a line has been drawn who is on the Lord's side who is on the side of safety and preservation our forefathers even though they did not serve the god of heaven they were intelligent enough to know that they would never leave home without protection am i right on that they had all kinds of things they would tie some they would swallow some some of us even growing up sadly Maybe we were victims of some of these people. They made all kinds of incisions. They made incantations. They were not evil. It was their way. They knew that the war is risky to walk without protection and preservation. Someone can shake your hand and say, how are you? I've not seen you for 10 years. And from the day he shook your hand, you don't know whether it's HIV or it's cancer. You just know you are losing weight. You just know you are not seeing well. What is happening to you? Where did you go to? I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. I lay me down and I slept. I wait. For the Lord sustains me. The Lord a shield for me. My glory and the of 
prophesy it upon your destiny. you're seated I'd like you to begin to prophesy protection upon yourself and upon your children no power no enchantment no charm will walk over my life in the name of Jesus I declare that I am on the Lord's side oh they shall gather but that their gathering is not of God there is a mysterious force that will scatter them declare prayer covering over your children over your ministry I will not be the victim of the conclusion of the wickedness of men, immune by the jealousy and the preserving power of Elohim. Someone pray. I have no covenant with death. I have no covenant with destruction. I have no covenant with necromancy and invocation of dark powers, activities of familiar spirits. Hallelujah. 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 The higher you rise in life, the more you must understand the mystery of preservation. Please hear what I'm telling you. I'm not scaring you, but I'm opening you to the reality of the world that we live in. Are we together? What did Jesus do to command attacks? All he needed to do was exploits. And a, a group of people gathered and said, this person is making news too much. No, this he's, the whole city is turning towards him. What do we do now? Who can we use? What can we use? Let me prophesy to someone, any gathering, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, where your name is mentioned for evil, may fire consume that gathering. May fire consume that gathering. May fire consume that gathering. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Let me speak over any man of God here. Any attack to fight your mantle. Every attack to fight your church. Every orchestration of darkness to fight your relevance. It goes down in the name of Jesus. Please sit down. This is the reason why it matters whose side you are. Jesus told us that we have the liberty to serve many things, not just many gods. In fact, you can choose God or mammon. You can choose the God of heaven or Baal. You can choose God of heaven or whatever kind of thing. You can even serve yourself, be the God of yourself. Like the rich fool said, my soul find rest. Number two. What does it mean to be on the Lord's side? What is the implication of being on the Lord's side in this day and in this time? Are you ready now? The Lord's side is the side of power. The Lord's side is the side of power. It says, our Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. If God needed power to make the heavens and the earth, it would take power to make anything in your life, including the future that you desire. Our Lord God, he says, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. My apologies, Jeremiah 32 and you find 16, 17, 17. Our Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Please write this scripture down and don't forget it. In this world, you need power. Yes, sir. Power. Power to subdue. Power against. The Bible says, as many as believed in him, he gave them power. Not just an information. The disciples had knowledge, but he said, tarry. Knowledge alone will fail you. Carry on till you are endued with power. Man of God, you do ministry in this end time without securing power. 
businessman without securing power you will be a casualty for nothing power hallelujah the Bible says that they found the nation of Israel gathered together and they assumed a certain formation with the ark being in their center. And when they called on Balaam to curse them, he tried and it did not work. He said, listen, a shout of the king is in the midst of them. There is a formation that has produced power that no matter what it is that has come, is being resisted. It takes power to be wealthy and to retain wealth. It takes power to raise children with the wicked options that plague our world. That your child will ask you a question that you cannot sleep because of something he has learned somewhere. Growing up, if parents did not want you to watch certain things, all they needed to do was to off the television. And everyone knows that it's over. But right now, you off the TV, they own many other things many other things the bible says there is as it were many voices and that none of them is without signification who is on the lord's side means who is interested in accessing power to remain power to continue power to subdue number three what is the implication of being on the lord's side are you ready for number three the lord's side is a side of victory the lord's side is a side of victory the bible says the shouts of joy and victory shall not depart from the tent of the righteous the shout of joy and victory shall not depart listen the tent of the righteous victory now thanks be to god which causes us always to triumph listen look up please for the believer in christ challenges are not unusual no it is defeat that is unusual it is not unusual to be challenged whether in your health whether in your finances whether in your marriage whether with your children it's not unusual did your bible not say many are the afflictions of the but it does not stop there it says the lord delivered him from them how many so the moment you find yourself in a disturbing situation before you try to manage it, verify whose side you are standing on. Who is on the Lord's side, meaning who is on the side of victory. As a man of God, if you are not on the Lord's side, respectfully speaking, you can choose the side of manipulation, you can choose the side of outsourcing negative demonic powers, in the end it will fail and fail woefully. Who is on the Lord's side? The Lord's side is the side of victory. Can I give us two more? Number four, the Lord's side is the side of joy and pleasure. Joy and pleasure. Yes, sir. Joy and pleasure. Psalm 16 and verse 11. The Lord's side is the side of joy and pleasure. Let's read it together if you're a child of God. Ready? One, two, read. Thou will show me the path of life. Uh-huh. In thy presence is fullness of joy at thy right hand. So if you are not in his presence, you are not at his right hand, you will not see joy and you will not see pleasure. Hallelujah. There are people in this season that in the midst of lack, in the midst of want, in the midst of economic turmoil, God will place garments of honor upon them that you look at their lives and you marvel and wonder and say, wow, look, it looks like there is famine in Samaria. How come these people are enjoying abundance like this? Because when you come to the Lord's side, you have come to the side of joy, you have come to the side of pleasure. He said, he that told you have asked for nothing, he says to ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Which of you, the Bible says, whose father, give us Matthew chapter 7 now, from verse 7, ask and you shall receive, he says, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Is that true? Verse 8, he says, for everyone that asketh receiveth, everyone that ask it receive it watch this if you believe that i have something to help you and you want to ask me you're not going to stand from a distance to ask me you have to draw close to my direction is that true coming 
on the Lord's side, meaning you are coming to the side of the one who you believe has all things to give you. And he said, everyone who comes close enough to ask, to seek, to knock, there is, there is a guarantee that it shall be opened, that you shall find. Hallelujah. That which of you will your sons ask for bread and you give him a stone or ask for fish and you give him a serpent? That if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. You will live a very sad life, a very defeated life by every standard and every definition if you reject the Lord's side. And technology, respectfully speaking, has his side. Culture has his side. Are we together? The devil directly has his side. Experience also has his side. But those who will win in this time are those who choose the Lord's side. For the way of the Lord is the way I choose the way of the Lord. Sing it one more time from your heart. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. You can do ministry the way you think they are doing it. You can do business the way you think they are doing it. And people gather you and say, this is how they do it now. Or you can choose that I will be on the Lord's side. May be unpopular, but that is still the Lord's side. The Bible says, narrow is the way that leads to life. And there are few that follow thereof. It says, broad is the way. Huh? that leads to destruction and many this is how society is doing it now when you want a job this is how to do it huh? yes when you want to do ministry you want a crowd there is somebody who will give you something you eat it or rub it or do whatever you do with it if you want money from people members there is a way you do it <laughs> for the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom I choose the way listen the Bible says in Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8 it says and Daniel purposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat what was wrong with the portion of the king's meat was it the animal that was slaughtered no it was the sacrifice and the covenant that was connected to it there was a particular dedication that those animals, those rituals, and he said, no, I have a covenant with God. I know that it's a pleasure to come and eat with the king, but I know what you've done with that animal. I know that you have sacrificed it to a God somewhere, and I will not do anything that would defile my honor to the king. And he had to eat leaves, vegetables, and water. After 10 days, when they came and presented themselves, they found that he was, he was healthier, he was fresher. Are we together? The Lord's side is the side of joy and pleasure. Can I tell you? Do not generalize the fact that there's economic hardship everywhere. Do not generalize the fact that things are not working everywhere. While I respect and sympathize with our world today and our society that these things... Uh, they are not they are not on true statements but there is a place of immunity the Lord's side is a place of exemption where people can be exempted and you can enjoy pleasure you can enjoy joy and abundance even in the midst of scarcity did the Bible not say when men say there is a casting down for you depending on whose side you are don't claim the scripture till you verify whose side you are. There are many who keep confessing, I will say there is a lifting up. But then they are speaking from a side that is far from God's side. It may not be your experience. Number five. What is the fifth implication of being on the Lord's side? Is the Lord teaching someone tonight? The Lord's side is the side of rest round about. 
the Lord's side, oh hallelujah, this is powerful. The side of rest, round about. Rest round about. In Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28, please give it to us. Matthew eleven twenty-eight. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor. The word labor there does not mean diligence, profitless work, toiling and a heavy leaden he says and i will give you rest he never said i will give you a job he never said i will give you a child he never said i will give you business he said i will give you rest you know what that means whatever it is that will put you in a state of rest including the things that you do not even know you need when you come to me i will give you more than what you ask for the goal is to find rest the bible says there remained a rest for the people of god rest on all sides rest on all sides genesis 24 and verse 1 let me show you what rest roundabout looks like genesis 24 and verse 1 everybody please read together this is the Bible's definition of rest. Ready? One to read. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. Uh huh. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Say all things. One more time. Say all things. Rest. Show me a man who has chosen to be on the Lord's side. Forget about what you think is not in place. Eventually, that person's life will be left a praise to the nations. Yes, sir. There were people who, as at the time they came to the Lord's side, there were many things that were not working in their lives. Maybe their marriages, maybe their finances, maybe their children, but they were determined to stay in the Lord's side. And eventually, Isaac for Sarah, Samuel for Anna, are we together? Yes. Gideon became a warrior. Joseph became a king. Daniel was exalted to become one of the presidents. When you choose the Lord's side, it may have a momentary discomfort, but I assure you by the God of heaven, that if you make up your mind that no matter what happens, I will choose the Lord's side. In other words, you would have been married if only you compromised your faith and followed the man just for money. But you made up your mind and said, I'm going to do it God's way. It may cost me, they may laugh at you and say, you will sit down there and grow old. Or maybe some kind of mockery, but you've made up your mind that if it is not the Lord's side, I am not going. You would have given bribe or you would have gone to do some things and you would have been walking by now. And people look at you, those who did it that you did not do will look at you and laugh at you and say you see me practicing all this and I'm being promoted I'm now a director you are still there unemployed there are times that it looks stupid to be on the Lord's side but can I tell you the Lord's side is a side of rest roundabout the Bible says mark the wicked their end is destruction so don't you just rejoice when people continue to cut corners and compromise and go forward sometimes they make believers look stupid and wicked they were sharing the money from the bribe in the office and you made up your mind that I will stand with integrity you would have gotten 10 million 100 million and you would have kept quiet nobody will know is God speaking to someone the Lord's side is the side of rest rest roundabout that a day will come they look at you and your children are well behaved because there is a covenant that keeps them in the way of the Lord and they ask you what did you do our own children are giving us headache we're almost losing sleep and your children are so obedient you are so wealthy and yet your children are not lawless and you will tell them I had an option to fast track my life and destroy my life but I made up my mind that I would choose the Lord's side are we together Who is on the Lord's side? Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. Make up your mind from today. And I'm going to ask you to lay your hands on your head shortly and cry that no matter what it takes, I will remain on the Lord's side. Lay your hands on your head and begin to pray. Lay your hands on your head. 
begin to pray begin to make declarations that in the name of Jesus I am on the Lord's side and no matter what it will cost me I decree and declare that I remain on the Lord's side go ahead and pray how I love to stand for you how I love to worship you and even though it hurts me for every step I take and even though it pains me for every move I make but I love you I can never ever do without you I love you I can never ever do without you I love you I can never ever do without you pray in one minute I choose the Lord's side I may cry why standing on the Lord's side but I choose the Lord's side I may lose a lot of things momentarily while standing on the Lord's side but I choose the Lord's side I will do ministry the Lord's side the Lord's way I will stand on his side I will grow wealthy standing on the Lord's side doing it his way someone pray who is on the Lord's side in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus now I haven't told you the implications of being on the Lord's side maybe I should recap for one last time number one that the Lord's side is the side of protection and preservation number two the Lord's side is the side of power. Number three, the Lord's side is the side of joy or victory. Number four, the Lord's side is the side of joy and pleasure. Finally, I said the Lord's side is the side of rest round about. Now, I want to describe for you six people, six states that represent being on the Lord's side so that you will know clearly whether you're on the Lord's side or not. At the end of this discussion, there will be two groups in this place. Number one, those who are on the Lord's side indeed. Number two, those who need to migrate to be on the Lord's side. Are you ready? So who is on the Lord's side? Number one, what kind of person can we say is on the Lord's side indeed? Are you ready? Number one, one who has received the free gift of forgiveness and eternal life through Jesus. That is the first person we can say is on the Lord's side. Who is on the Lord's side, I repeat. One who has received the free gift of forgiveness and eternal life through Jesus. Received the free gift of forgiveness and eternal life not through a prophet, not through an apostle, not through a church, but through Jesus and him alone. In John chapter 1 from verse 11 and 3, we're discussing who is on the Lord's side now. The Bible says he came unto his own and his own received him not. Verse 12, let's read together. Ready one to read. But as many as received him, the Bible says to them he gave power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So who is on the Lord's side? One who has received the free gift of forgiveness. Romans chapter 5 from verse 1 and 2. Romans 5 from verse 1 and 2. It says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God hallelujah through our Lord Jesus Christ verse 2 it says by whom we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God 
Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. You cannot be on the Lord's side if you have rejected Jesus. The issue of accepting Jesus, his substitutionary sacrifice, obtaining forgiveness and mercy by his shed blood, and then receiving of his life, is not an issue of fanatism. It's not an issue of altar call. It's not even an issue of being a Christian. This is a call to a functional relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5 and verse 11. Please give it to us. And this is the record, the Bible says, that God had given Joshua Selman eternal life. He says, and this life is in his son. Verse 12. He says, he that hath the son hath life. And he that had not the Son of God had not life. The word life is the Greek word zoe, the life of God. Not just your biological life. You can be living in as much as we know biologically and yet be dead spiritually. Hallelujah. Apostle, how do I know that I am on the Lord's side? I have to check if you have obtained willfully and consciously forgiveness of sins. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Whether you are from whatever nation, whatever race, it doesn't matter how righteous you perceive yourself to be. The Bible says, from the lens of God's eternal justice, no man that the greatest of us are righteousness are as filthy rags. So Jesus stands and makes a call that you come to him just as you are. The hymn writer says, just as I am without one plea, you come to Jesus, the son of God, the one who gave his life for you. Are we together? Yes. Let me tell you sincerely, if you have not, if you have not made Jesus Lord of your life consciously, even if you were born by a missionary father or a prophet or an apostle, you have not chosen to be on the Lord's side. Ah. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the reef. You know why Jesus died? He did not die because he was a sinner. He died because he became sin. And all sinners are doomed to die. But rather than you doing the death out of love and sent by the Father, he died that death for you tasting that death that spiritual death once and for all the bible says in john chapter 3 and verse 16 this is not just some evangelical message listen very carefully john chapter 3 and verse 16 he says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him whether you are from the east, from the west, whether you are from a family of curses, whether you are someone who has smoked and drank everything you know, it doesn't matter whosoever believes in him. The Bible says he should not perish. It's a law. Once you believe in him, there is no perishing. It says, but have eternal life, everlasting life. 17, it says, for God did not send, he sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. For there's none other name, the Bible says, under heaven given unto men. The name of Joshua Selman cannot save you. Mm -mm. The name of any apostle or prophet or man of God or government cannot bring salvation. No. There's only one God, one name that saves. And tonight he wants to save you. What does it mean to save you? That through atonement, the pain of a ransom, that ransom being his life, he has the power now to translate you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Do you know there are many people in church who are not saved? They just came around church and started listening to sermons till they became leaders. They cannot tell you, listen, growing up, you know, some of our old ones that we say they are old school, there was something, some of them used to write the dates they gave their lives to Christ. Remember? 
they can say on the 12th of January. But there are many people today, you ask them, are you saved? They say, yes. How do you know? Well, I just know that I've been around this church thing and I've discovered by the privilege of God's grace, I've been in this work for a while. Most people are not saved because the gospel was not really presented to them. Most people do not even know what they should believe. And respectfully speaking, let me charge preachers. They have to place their faith in the message. It has to be articulately communicated. Don't just say, come out if you want to be saved. From what to what? So you see people come out and they're smiling while they're saying the salvation prayer. Or someone just walks up and says, amen. No, sir, you were not saved. Are we together? If you're a missionary here or you're an evangelist, don't go to a crusade ground and be teaching on finances. Don't go on a crusade ground and be teaching on marriage or teaching. No, no. The purpose of a crusade is to directly bring the gospel to save sinners. There are conferences. Now, I'm not, I'm not being sarcastic. There are conferences and believer meetings that can now zoom to various dimensions of kingdom living and strengthen people. But listen, once you're on a crusade ground, the mission is that Jesus will turn many to righteousness. I can't teach you, I can't just talk to you for hours and hours on wealth and prosperity. And then, I, I mean, if, if I'm teaching, of course, I will make the altar call regardless what I'm saying. But even if it's in two minutes, I will say something. The message is very simple. You don't need Rema or Greek or Hebrew. Jesus wants the message to get to the ends of the earth. So he took away the complication. Nina Yesune Bazankoma Bazankoma Bayaba Nina Yesune Bazankoma Bazankoma Bayaba Nasa Never going back, never going back. So you find many people who tell you they are saved. You cannot see the evidence of salvation. They've not met Jesus. Of course, I've taught you when you meet Jesus, it doesn't mean you are automatically transformed. Are we together now? But that you have received that life, the capacity to now begin the process of transformation. Many people in our churches are not saved. I don't say this from a standpoint of sarcasm. That's the reason why you see many people are given leadership positions who have not met Jesus. And they keep making the work of the kingdom difficult because they were never saved. You lay hands and lay hands and lay hands and nothing happens because there is an eternal access for spirits to remain and return back again. People fall down and stand up, fall down and stand up. There are others you can lay everything you have to receive the Holy Ghost. They will receive because they are not saved. Listen, let me tell you this. And don't just think this is a preacher's fanatism. Make sure everybody around you is saved. Are your children saved? No, they are, they are, they are, you know how I am. I don't want any controversy. No. This issue, we have to return back with the passion that we, the passion that brought us to the fold. This is not about being an evangelist or a missionary. It's about being passionate enough to love people. When you see a pole wire wanting to fall down on someone, do you need to be related to the person to save the person? I know we have downplayed the message of salvation in church, for instance, and we say, no, 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 don't say anything that threatens people. Let them not feel condemned. Listen, this is not about feeling condemned. There is a real hell. There are people going there, and there are more people who will go there. Are we together now? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will, he will convict the world of three things, sin, righteousness, and judgment. The purpose of being saved is not just for a good life. 
The purpose of being saved is not just for prosperity. Those things are the, 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 the after effects of walking with God. Is the reason why even those who are saved at the slightest show of disappointment, like the Moses generation, they will start building idols and say, you, you told me if I'm saved in two weeks, I will have a car. In two weeks, I will have a house. Now I'm saved these five years. No nothing. I'm going back. The Moses generation. Hallelujah. Apostle, what do I do now that I have children that look like they will not be saved? Start with intercession. I have taught you. We live in a world where you can't go and stop someone and begin to waylay them. People have rights and even God respects their will. So I'm not talking about isolating people and being fanatical and bullying people and then being antagonistic to people of other religions or other race. This is not what I'm teaching you. The least you can do is to begin to intercede. Write their names. Bring it for miracle service. Write their names before you write a car. Write their names before you write a husband. Write their names before you write promotion. Father saved. Many of you follow the UK conference. I'm sure you saw one of the women who was jumping at the miracle of salvation. Most people, it would take going to heaven and seeing it from the realm of the spirit to know the power of salvation. That Saul can be turned to Paul. That Cephas can be turned to Peter. Who told you God cannot save your husband? Have you prayed? Do you know the power that raised Christ from the dead? How were you when he saved you? Apostle, you don't know what I've done with my life. It does not matter. Apostle, you don't know the kind of husband I married. When I married him, I was not saved. This man drinks anything he finds. Oh, this man is an occultic man. He does, he has, he's, he's in a fraternity that I know. Don't belittle the power of God. You just begin to pray. Invest in intercession. Father, my husband will not go to hell. Lord, this my child that has vowed that you will not love the Lord. What it takes is one solid encounter. You see him, this God we serve, most people don't respect him. They just believe in him. The day God chooses to answer mama's prayer, what he will do to that son. Listen, before Jesus Christ comes, there are many people who are in the beer parlor today. Tomorrow you will see them on a crusade ground and say, this, is this not the same person? Someone's intercession has brought the person to Jesus. Are we together? You are not a Christian, I'm telling you sincerely. If the passion, if the passion for souls die in your life, is a greater attack than an att attack on your prayer life. We have used other indices today. People, people who don't have a passion for souls, but have a passion for prayer, have a passion for anointing. They call themselves matured Christians. Go and read the Bible and see the indices that show passion and love for God. Peter, loveth me thou more than this. He said, feed my lamb. Let me, let me see the level of love you have for me by, by your, your passion for souls. Not just your passion for anointing. Not just your passion for prayer or for revelation. Those things are wonderful. But there are many people who want the anointing, they want prayer just for flesh so that they can rise to be famous. When you win souls, it doesn't look like it's very marketable. The souls will not give you anything. They will not reward you. You will not be famous. I'm praying that God will restore our passion. In the name of Jesus Christ. What does it mean to be on the Lord's side? I'm just on number one, no? Oh. This, the, 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 this is, I'm describing the kind of people who are on the Lord's side. This is number one. One who has received the free gift of forgiveness. The high point of our crusade in the UK was when we made the altar call and we saw people running to Jesus. I'm telling you, that thing does something to me. Hallelujah. Should I make an altar call now? Yes, it's a very good idea to make an altar call right now. Because you strike when the iron is hot. Many of you, as you are hearing me now, I just, I proposed Jesus to you. Listen, have you ever wondered why you hate Jesus? For some of you, maybe. Have you ever wondered why it looks like you are not serious about these things of God? If it's football, yes. Other things, yes. But the moment you mention Jesus, because there is a spirit 
that knows that when you come to the Lord's side, he can begin to rewrite your story. I hope you know, you may be jumping now because you are 18 years, 19 years, 25 years. You will not always be 25 years. And whether you like it or not, as age comes, there are things that will fade away. And at the end of your life, certain things you were playing with, jumping around, I'm telling you that immaturity will fade away. And most of the people who were playing and wasting your destiny with you, I'm not condemning you. Some of them will be old, some of them will die. Some of them will waste your time and then quiet quietly go and repent later on listen to me the Bible says that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved what does it mean to be saved it means number one to believe that Jesus actually walked upon the earth he came from heaven as an incarnate of the father what does it mean to receive Jesus that you believe that his purpose of coming was as a revelation of the father's love that he came and died being the penalty for death because it is written the soul that sinned it shall die and since we're all sinners based on God's justice system we all should die but Jesus now came as an expression of love that instead of us doing that death ourselves he will put that death on himself and die the death for us that if you believe in that substitutionary sacrifice the first thing you are granted is forgiveness of sins by atonement the second thing you have is access to his life righteousness the ability to stand in the presence of the father without a sense of inferiority a sense of guilt a sense of condemnation you have access to the Holy Spirit. The Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every man that hangeth upon the tree, that the blessing of Abraham, justification by faith, might come upon we the Gentiles, to the end that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So Apostle, now that I've heard you, where do I start? That right where you are seated, in this auditorium and in all the overflows outside and following across the globe the first thing you have to do is to believe that I'm not lying to you the first thing you have to do is to believe that this preacher who is speaking to you is speaking from a standpoint of love the second thing you need to do is to act out your belief by faith the Bible says in Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 are we together now? It says that the word is nigh thee, even in your mouth and your heart. The word of faith that we preach. The next verse says that if thou shalt confess with your mouth, your mouth has a role to play in your being saved. And it says to believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Then it says thou shalt be saved. Verse 10, it says for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Is the Greek word soteria salvation all kinds of salvation but in this case the salvation of your soul i want to be sure that you are saved being on the lord's side primarily means that you have made this choice to say apostle i have an option to reject jesus i have an option to choose whatever i want to do it's my life this is the generation that likes that statement it's true that it's your life but one day you will learn that you were created. Are we together? So when you come to stand here in total surrender, what do you stand to receive? You are standing before Jesus and you are giving your life and your destiny. Look at me, please. Did you know that for some of you in making your, 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 your confession of faith to Jesus, everybody who comes out of you will almost naturally follow the God that you know. When a man is not saved, he will become a father that is not saved. He will become a husband that is not saved. He will produce a family that is not saved, which will contribute to making a society that is not saved and will make a nation that is not saved. When a woman is not saved, she will become a mother that does not care. What, 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 whatever her daughters become, it does not matter. Tonight, throw away that it does not matter. Let me make an altar call before we continue. There's no need to, to coerce anyone. Please, everybody listen to me. This is a matter of life and death. This is a matter of Jesus. You are here and you've listened to me. And while you listen to me, for so some of you are saying, I, I've never heard it this way. 
I didn't know this is the good news is that you do not have to pay the price of your sins by yourself again. The eternal father sent his son. He's paid the price. Your assignment is to believe and that in believing you receive eternal life, the very life of God. I'm going to make an altar call. Tonight I want somebody who is bold. Tonight I want somebody who is determined. Tonight I want somebody who has cried in the secret but laughed in the open as if everything is all right. Tonight I want somebody who comes from a family where no one has risen. You know that you may not be serious with God but you know you see the activity of demon spirits around your life and your family. The way out is not counseling. Counseling comes later. The way out is not convincing yourself that there is no evil. The way of escape is Jesus. Now, you see, I don't have to force you. You can make up your mind to listen to me and say, wow, this preacher, I'm glad that you know what you're saying and yet not make that response. Mine is to stand in partnership with the Spirit of God who is the Lord of the harvest and propose to you Jesus again. Perhaps you have been here, you watch other people come, you watch the conference, you saw people say, but maybe you've not been convinced. Can you win that war right now? Whether you are outside or inside, I'm going to count one to five. And without looking and waiting for anyone to be the first, I want somebody tonight who is bold and serious and saying, for the sake of my children, I will make this decision. I came from a family where no one made this decision. They had their chance. Begin to run out and come and stand here. One. Two. Come. Don't be ashamed. Don't mind who is looking at you. Come to Jesus. Yes, sir. Come. Come. Apostle, I come from the east. Come. I come from the west. Come. I don't even know who my father is. You're welcome. Come. He is truly able to give you a new beginning. Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty handed but alive in your hands. Come to Jesus. Majesty. Majesty. Forever I am changed by your love. In the presence of your majesty. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Come. Majesty. Listen, years ago, I went to preach in a particular campus many years ago. And when I preached, I made an altar call like this. It was, I think, during their missions program. And then among the many people who came was a gentleman in that place. And just joining the crowd like many people here, he lifted his hands. A few years later, he would invite me. He had now become the campus fellowship president. A vibrant gentleman who was now serving God spearheading revival within his campus I was so blessed and elated when I saw him and last I last I heard from him he was still on fire loving the Lord you never can tell how far listen please look at me my dear people we are not acting here. Some of you, while you are standing here, heaven is rejoicing. Because this is what God told those who went before you. To say the cure to this cause, this backwardness in the family, the cure is Jesus. No matter what kind of job you get minus Jesus, it will backfire eventually. I assure you. Apostle, I always want to come, but church has condemned me. They made it look like the way my life is, I am so filthy. Don't worry, don't feel bad. I apologize on behalf of those who did it. Maybe they did it sincerely based on how they were mentored. 
But you see, let me tell you, the Bible says that everyone who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Rebels don't come to Jesus. Rebels run away from Jesus. The fact that you made a bold step to come here is a sign that the Holy Spirit is already working in your heart. And let me tell you, no matter how far you have been, right now he's ready to make it right with you. Are we together? You are like that prodigal son, that prodigal daughter. Let me lead you. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Everybody who is sincerely saved had a point in his life where they made this decision. I'm talking of genuine salvation that transforms you truly. May I please request that you lift your right hand, all of you, as a sign of surrender to Jesus. And perhaps someone is lifting his hands right there in your room. You're watching by your electronic device. You're watching by television. You're watching a rebroadcast. It does not matter. You can start afresh. You can start right now. The business of Jesus provided you a life. It is never too late. The Bible says today if you hear his voice, to harden not your heart like they did in the wilderness. Lift your right hand. Don't be ashamed. The tears are a sign of surrender. They mean you are giving up on yourself to embrace a greater life. The tears mean I have trusted other things. The meaning of your cries, be magnified, O oh Lord. You are highly exalted, and there is nothing you can't do. O oh Lord, my eyes are on you, be magnified. My dear brothers and sisters, I salute you. Please say this prayer after me. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Say, Jesus. Let him hear you. He's here. Say, Jesus. I have come to you tonight just as I am. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive you into my heart as my Lord as my Savior and as my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight until forever I am a child of God I go from glory to glory Amen. Keep your hands lifted and witness the power of salvation. I declare by the integrity of scripture that your sins are forgiven. And in the name of Jesus, I call you recipients of the life of God. I decree and declare that every guilt, every hurt, every shame of the past or whatever it is that the devil is bringing by the blood, we erase it right now. And I declare that from tonight, you begin to walk in righteousness. In the name of Jesus and I just feel scared to pray one prayer every spirit that followed you here that might be responsible for any addictions or anything keeping you back I command now let them go out now in the name of Jesus out of their lives for the gospel is the power of God unto salvation release them now in the name of Jesus, every generational curse, every yoke that sat upon those who went ahead of them and wants to manipulate them into a life of failure. Satan, you heard their confession. Therefore, by the blood of the eternal covenant, release them now in the name of Jesus. For the Bible says, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. I declare your liberty, you are free indeed. In the name of Jesus Christ. This life that I have is the life of Christ in me. This life that I have is the life of God. This life that I have is the life of Christ in me.
that's what you just received the indestructible life of God thank you very much for making this bold decision here's what I want you to do the service is still ongoing but please lend me two or three minutes of your time I want you to please move to my right you see the counselors waving the placard all of you in concert as we clap and celebrate you please be mindful of the um, they will have a word with you very quickly and you'll be back let's celebrate them as they go is this the best you can do hallelujah ladies and gentlemen you are witnessing the power of the gospel when it is articulately communicated and backed up by the power of God it is not like people are so rebellious it is that most times we are not taking time to preach the gospel because we ourselves do not understand what Jesus did do you know a preacher can be ministry for many years and yet not study what redemption is all about I submit to you without sounding arrogant there are many preachers if we are called to line up and say give us a rundown in points from point one the whole discourse of salvation you will be surprised how many of us preach in conferences and shout I'm Apostle Joshua Selman and yet cannot articulate the gospel it's like a doctor that does not understand the human body it's like a doctor who is practicing and does not even know how to give an injection these are the basics how did you get there in the first place so if you're a man of God here please listen to me I submit to you and I'm saying it because I love you and it's time for the body of Christ to mature leave the issue of study of Greek and Hebrew nine ways to do this go and study salvation what has Jesus done understand it first you only teach and mature people who are saved don't waste your time trying to teach and getting into deeper spiritual things over people who have not even encountered Jesus. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.